very hot on the field. The official temperature, 93 degrees at kickoff. We've had record heat here in San Diego over the last few days. Steelers won the toss, and they're going to receive. So you see the principals who will be out there when we get going. Josh Lambeau is the rookie kicker for the Chargers. Dree Archer back deep to receive. Oh, mess of terrible towels. It feels like Western PA instead of Southern California. Archer all the way back. No return. Good kick by Lambeau. So here comes Mike Vick. Been around a long time. So many of the guys on both sides grew up playing video games, idolizing this guy. Here he is, his fourth stop. Wasn't in a training camp, signed August 25th. So Johnny's only been here seven weeks as a skewer. Got to get the ball to Le'Veon Bell. That's the easy thing for Pittsburgh to do. You're going to see bootlegs, play action passes, and don't be surprised if you see the zone read that Michael Vick brought to the NFL. Opening drive starting from the 20. Le'Veon Bell is always patient. Good job by San Diego to get on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Terry Tauchu helping make the tackle with Manti Teo. Loss of two. So the group up front, this is the same group that started every game, but of course Cody Wallace is in for Marquise Pouncey, who was injured in the preseason at center. Handling the ball, Heath Miller, their terrific tight end. D'Angelo Williams may see a little more action with Bell. Antonio Brown sensational, John talked about before. In the receiving core. Officially a loss of one on first down, second down. Vic flush throws. Heath Miller. First down for Heath, gained a 25, just shy of the 45. So Michael Vick does. He loves play action passes off of a strong running game. Pressure off the left side. Vick eludes it to his left and makes a beautiful throw to Heath Miller. Antonio Brown clears it out deep, and Heath Miller continues to be one of the best unheralded tight ends in football. Officially a gain of 26. Vic goes to the top of the screen here, John. A little wildcat look. Direct snap to Le'Veon Bell, who puts it in the belly of D'Angelo Williams. He makes a cutback and gains a couple of yards. The wildcat. You're going to see those types of plays with Vic, but I like the fact that Michaels had a full week to get oriented in this Pittsburgh offense. Watch him reading it off the wristband. Formations, shifts, motions, protections, calling plays clearly, getting everyone organized is a real challenge. He's been in the West Coast offense for 10 years. This is foreign territory, learning Todd Haley's stuff. Right back to that same look, the Wildcat with Bell across midfield and to the 48-yard line. John, when you get a Thursday game, extra time to prepare, you can put in wrinkles like that and run some Wildcat. You can do anything you want with Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell jumps into the Wildcat. Todd Haley, very creative. And you have to give him credit for adjusting the Steeler offense dramatically, given the injury to Ben Roethlisberger. Marcus Wheaton, top of the screen, Brown in the slot, third and three. And Vic taking a deep shot towards Brown, well covered. And incomplete step for step, Jason Barrett is there. And the Steelers get a 25-yard game, which they hadn't had in two games, but can't do anything with it. Well, this San Diego secondary's been injured. It's good to see Barrett number 22, last year's number one pick, on the field, stepping up and making those kinds of plays. Huge stop for the Charger defense. First year punter Jordan Berry to kick it. Jacoby Jones finally healthy for the Chargers. Back deep to make the fair catch just outside the 15-yard line. It's only 33. It's all net. And Phillip Rivers will get on the field and take over for the Chargers in a moment. That's where San Diego began. What's the heart of... San Diego, still a vibrant celebration of California's past. First time for Rivers and the Chargers. Begin at their own 16. Here's the 
Gates protected underneath. Welcome back, Antonio Gates. Game of nearly 10. I love it. Been out for four weeks. He's active, throwing the ball right away, get him in this game. Antonio Gates, one of the great stories in pro football history. No football background. He's looking for his 100th touchdown reception tonight. I hope he gets it. Uh, snap first down rivers gates again first down again gains of 12 after a gain of 10 using a lot of empty backfield sets and trying to get antonio gates against these steeler linebackers and safeties tom brady had great success in the opening game with these no back formations and philip rivers is all over that Philip passes along personal messages to so many players along the way. Right out of his hands, quickly swing it out. Woodhead to the 40. Woodhead midfield. Danny Woodhead to the 40. And down to the 32-yard line with a flag at the back end. Oh, if it stands up, a big game. 31. You better be real careful blitzing Philip Rivers. Perhaps a trip downfield on the back end of this play. Pete Morelli is our referee. Personal foul. Grabbing the face mask. Number 31, defense. 15-yard penalty automatic. First down. They got a cock rope for the face mask, and he'll take it inside the red zone. Well, you see the blitz coming right up the middle. Two linebackers. Rivers sees it. Safety off the edge. He kicks the ball on the edge, and Danny Woodhead coming off a career game last week against Cleveland. Follows this up with a huge play. You see the face mask. First down. So Cockrell had a couple of takeaways in that Baltimore game. They're going to find him, keep the Steelers on their skates. You see that blitz, and Rivers able to handle it as well as anybody in the league at the start of the season. Oh. Good power running by Melvin Gordon. John, the first round pick, 15th overall out of Wisconsin. Has him down to 12. Well, I love him at Wisconsin. He's in a totally different offense. He's in a single back set, running a lot of draws and trap plays. This is a pass first offense. He struggled to find his rhythm, but he's going to be a great pro. He's going to pedal down out of the pistol. Second and six, Rivers, oh end zone, number 100, Antonio Gates. He had an edge about him coming in here. He was not happy being suspended for four games, and he has a lot to prove, and man, is he proven it. Raffles, Philip Rivers saw it the whole way. He audibles to this pattern, and he gets Gates on a corner route against Will Allen. Another blitz by Pittsburgh and AK Beerley. 73 times. Gates at pay dirt with Philip Rivers. What a combination it's been. Antonio Gates, ninth player in NFL history to catch 100 touchdowns. Josh Lambeau for the extra point. And it's good. Four game with the suspension for violating the league's performance enhancing drug policy. Signed to get back on the field. Comes back with a milestone. Touchdown catch number 100. Nine players have caught 100 touchdowns. Antonio Gates becomes the second tight end on that list. We showed you at the top Jerry Rice. 97 away with 197. Look at the gap. Moss, T.O., Chris Carter, Marvin Harrison, Gonzalez the other tight end, and now it's Brown off the foot of Lambeau. And they have done it, as you mentioned, John, 73 times more than any quarterback to tight end. Rivers to Gates, that one in the record books. 
first Pittsburgh drive. They had that 25-yard gain to Heath Miller, ran a couple of Wildcat plays. Only picked up one first down. Their second drive, like the first, begins at their own 20. D'Angelo Williams in there to start this drive. As Todd Haley told us last night, using him a little bit more. Williams gains five yards. Here's Lisa Salters. Well, Mike, as you know, D'Angelo Williams lost his mother to breast cancer last year. And he said he went to the NFL earlier this season and, and asked if there was a way that he could wear pink throughout the season, not just in the month of October. He wasn't able to do that. But what he did do is he decided to streak his hair pink. He said, breast cancer awareness, it's not just about October for me. It's not just a month, it's a lifestyle. It's about getting women to recognize, to get tested. And he said, if I can help save lives, it will mean that my mother didn't go in vain. Right. It certainly made an impact. Vic gets hit there, and that is ruled a fumble on the field, now ruled incomplete. Pete Morelli, the referee, threw his beanbag, which would indicate a fumble, but then the official on the far side ruled incomplete. Melvin Ingram came in and made the big hit. Melvin Ingram, number 54, all over the field last week against Cleveland, punishes Michael Vick. Hey, they are going to test Vick tonight with blitzes. Defensive coordinator John Pagano knows Vick has a history of taking a lot of sacks. And he's going to find out how much Vick knows about this protection system by blitzing him. You can see, clearly incomplete. Vick's hand was on the ball as he was coming forward, and they need to take a timeout here with the play clock running down. The communication's gonna be interesting to watch here throughout, John. We hit, it on, hit on it earlier. Only seven weeks in camp, and Antonio Brown, the great receiver for the Steelers, the conversation that Todd Haley had right away after the Roethlisberger injury, how many throws have you had with Mike Vick? He said, none. So there's a hole getting used to it in a very short period of time. There are no OTAs in the spring. No training camp, so you missed that extra time. You missed the left-handed spin. I mean, you got to get the jugs machine straightened out so you can catch enough passes and get that left-handed spin. But Michael Vick, when he gets in the huddle as a quarterback, you need to call the play as you see it. Right. And right now, Vick is learning a whole new language, formations, motions, shifts. This is uncommon for him. He had, like you said, very little preparation and background in this style of football. He was sitting home. And he was shocked that he was sitting at home and no one called him in April, May to get a backup or a veteran backup. And then once the Steelers had the injury to Bruce Gradkowski, they weren't comfortable with Landry Jones, their backup, moving to that number two role. They went to Vic, who gives it to Bell and Le'Veon Bell on third and five. Gets about eight. Carries Eric Weddle past that first down marker. They like Bell deep in this I formation. They're going to toss the ball, present the illusion that he's running an outside play. But watch the patience he has to set up his blocks. And he takes Eric Weddle with him for the first down. 215 pounds he's down to, Mike. That's, that's unbelievable. He was 240 at Michigan State. Got down to 225 last year. That speed there. Tightened up that frame even more now. Heath Miller over the block again. Heath Miller threw a great block. The Bell's going to be limited in the game to a couple of yards. And Titeo with the tackle. We talk about Antonio Gates and the great receiving numbers that he has. Heath Miller is a huge part of this Steeler running game. And I know this doesn't show up on the stats, but they put him off the ball in these bunch formations, and he knocks people down repeatedly. What a pro football player he is. He can do it all. That's back-to-back -back plays. He's throwing key blocks. He had the block to Spring Bell for the first down run a moment ago. Second and nine, right back to Bell. Similar look. And John, there's see some of his patience as he runs for only a couple of yards. San Diego gave him nowhere to go. That's a Charger defense that's given up a decent number of points here. 27 and a half per game. Up front, Reyes, Lespore, and Legion. The four linebackers have already called Ingram and Atauchu on the side. Teo now taking over the signal calling on the defense, maturing into that role that Eric Weddle had. He's the one who keeps everyone organized in the back. When the Steelers go three wide, Patrick Robinson joins the group as the nickel. They're there right now, and Sammy Coates is that third receiver, bottom of your screen. Third and six. 
Vic runs away from Ingram, and Emmanuel tries to stay in bounds, but is pushed out by Daryl Stuckey as they went with a six DB, and it will be fourth down. It's Melvin Ingram. They use him creatively in third down situations. They use him as a linebacker off the ball, and he has the speed. The ex running back from South Carolina to go get you. And you have to be impressed with Verrett down the field against Antonio Brown, Mike. One on one coverage with no help. Nice work. He'll be officially credited as a sack. 42 on the kick. Fair caught by Jacoby Jones at the 24 yard line. Each Pittsburgh drive, one first down. Philip Rivers' first drive is a touchdown. Drive two in a minute. Think of San Diego, you think all the time at the beach, enjoy the sun, kick back. Now, it's been some hard work that Philip Rivers has put in here. Consecutive starts by quarterbacks in NFL history. Brett Favre set the standard at 297. Peyton Manning's run into the 208. Last night with that great come from behind drive in the fourth quarter, Eli Manning got it to 172. And fourth on the all time list is Rivers. Tonight it is start 149 for Philip, setting a franchise record for consecutive starts. And John, it's been with a lot of different guys up front protecting him. No doubt. I mean, three new starters in that offensive line tonight. But I love this offense. It's recognizable NFL concepts, five and seven step drops. San Diego attacks you vertically, not just horizontally like you see a lot today. And so much of it is because of Rivers. On his 12th year in the league. Rookie running back Gordon gains a yard. Sean Spence, who's in again for Ryan Shazier, who's inactive at linebacker with the tackle. And the San Diego offensive line makes it hard to do a lot of the things you want to do. No huddle offense, audibling at the line of scrimmage. Hairston, Wiggins, new players playing critical positions on that left side. They're going to have their hands full with the experienced Rivers and deciphering these audibles. Play action on second down. Rivers has time and complete. Darius Green on that sideline with a flag down. Holding number 75. Offense, 10 yard penalty, remains second down. So that's the left tackle, Chris Harrison. He's one of those players you talked about, that left side of the offensive line that changed. King Dunlop out with a concussion. So the guys you see a left tackle, left guard center towards the bottom. Harrison, Wiggins, and Robinson. They were new last week. This is their second consecutive start together as a unit. And you've already heard from Gordon and Woodhead up at the top. Keenan Allen's off to a terrific start. 33 catches on the season. And the two tight end look with Gates and Green, who had the catch there that's called back for the hole. Green and Gates are not your normal everyday tight end. They're more like big wideouts than tight ends. Penalty makes it second to 19. Off in time, and it gets the four-man rush. Take it down to Gordon. And he is wrapped up. Will Allen, veteran Will Allen. 12 years in the league already for Will Allen. Pulled him down by the leg. Former Buccaneer, Mike. That's one of my old draft picks. Let's hope he's okay. Troy Polamalu, the longtime Steeler, obviously retired. And Will Allen has taken his place, and that is not a good sign. Cortez Allen, the corner, out with the knees. So the veteran Will Allen comes hopping over to the sideline. Robert Golden, 21, checks in at safety. It's third and 18. Check down Danny Woodhead. Long way to go. Not going to get there. Lawrence Timmons, who's played a little outside linebacker, settled in an inside linebacker, answers the bell most days for the Steelers, makes the tackle. That's the font to it, Mike. He's had a lot of production, sacking the quarterback. He leads the Steelers. But the effort that this big man plays with is uncommon. Every down, he chases the ball at full speed. 95 degrees tonight. It'll be interesting to see how the heat takes its toll. Antonio Brown is back. Mike Cypress has struggled with the punt so far this year. It's a beauty. Brown from the 20. 
that's going to be a hole. They got uh, Antoine Blake, 41, as he was tied up with the coverage man. And it's going to push him back after a nice 54-yard kick from the veteran Cyphers. During the return, holding number 41 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down, and timeout. Pittsburgh will start inside its own 20. See if Bell can get the Steelers down the field. There's Big Ben. Talked to Mr. Roethlisberger before. And two weeks ago, yesterday, he was injured in St. Louis in that game. He jogged off the practice field Thursday. That was news in Pittsburgh. Here he was throwing a little bit before the game. He's never worn a brace on his knee, so he's trying to get comfortable with that. He didn't do a heck of a lot. He really would love. He's dying to play on Sunday against Arizona. That's Bruce Arians' coach team. Bruce was such a great connection with Ben when he was the offensive coordinator with the Steelers. That's going to be a big ask for that. And maybe in a couple of weeks against Kansas City. The game after that is Cincinnati. Mike Tomlin telling us last night, we're not there yet. We're not asking the doctors for a daily update. Next week we get back to Pittsburgh. We'll hone in on the timetable. That was originally four to six weeks, and we're two weeks through that here tonight. So Roethlisberger helping, trying to aid Michael Vick in what he sees. Le'Veon Bell sees a whole bunch of bolts. Chargers with a stop and a loss of two yards. Screen pass, high percentage throws, and San Diego was waiting on that one. Number 37, a die. Safety man is going to make the play here. You're going to see the screen come across the formation. A lot of bolts fly into the football. Good pursuit. Touchy tail, linebacking core here for the Chargers. D'Angelo Williams in second and 12. And it'll be a run with D'Angelo Williams up the middle. He'll get to the 18-yard line. So it'll be a gain of about seven yards. Take a look at this third down coming up. A lot of perimeter defensive backs on the field. Left guard Ramon Foster almost stands up staring at Michael Vick. So the center, number 70, Cody Wallace, can make all the declarations. Watch 73 is going to stand up, turn around, and let Michael Vick tell him when to snap the ball. <laughs> Every down. They taps the center. It's let's go time. Vick on the crosser. It's complete. There's Brown with a lot of space. Antonio Brown into Charger territory. Going to be marked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Big gain on third down. That would be upsetting if I were the coach of the Chargers. You blow a coverage on a simple shallow cross to Antonio Brown. You see the brush off. Verrett got picked on the play. Levels of defense. If you're on the same level, there's a good chance you get picked off. And that's a nicely executed crossing route by Antonio Brown. 39-yarder. And it's right near the top of the yardage category again in receiving as we wrap up week five. D'Angelo Williams, the back. Puts his head down, and he gains three yards. John, Le'Veon Bell was on the field so much last year for San Diego, or for Pittsburgh. You wonder, do you want to keep him out there all the time? Of course you do. But with what D'Angelo Williams showed when Bell was suspended the first couple of games, Todd Haley wants to make sure he gets both involved in the offense. How would you like to have D'Angelo Williams, the all-time leading rusher of the Carolina Panthers, as a backup? I give Pittsburgh credit. Michael Vick as a backup, first-round pick. Darius Hayward Bay, top ten pick. They've got a lot of former number one picks paying huge dividends. Hayward Bay's the motion man. Bell's the lone back. They protect it. Looking towards Brown, and it is nearly intercepted as the flag is down as well. That was about two flags down. That was a little bit of the communication with the quarterback and the receiver in that scramble. Holding, number 26, offense, 10-yard penalty remains, second down. That's a bad play by Michael Vick. They're lucky that was not intercepted and returned for a touchdown. Vick, late with this throw, he telegraphed it. And that ball should have been intercepted. There's Barrett doing an excellent job. He knows he should have had that pick. 
See, Brown was kind of turning, move upfield a little bit. And Vick had thrown so often to see Roethlisberger get out of the pocket, extend plays, and make plays. Not happening there. Manti Teo injured. Came out on that play. Second and 17, Bell on the screen. It's the 41 yard line. It'll be a gain of nine as we wind down this first quarter. And Denzel Perryman, number 52, is going to have his hands full. Teo was wearing that green dot to get the communication from the sidelines. It'll be interesting to see who's wearing that communication device now for the Chargers. Tough spot for Perryman, who's out of the game now in this sub package. A couple of members of the athletic training staff team doctor looking at Teo seated on the San Diego bench. Third and eight need to get to the 33. Four in the pattern for Vic, and the throw is incomplete, looking for Brown. And one more time, Jason Verrett all over him. He's a heck of a player. He's just had some injury problems. Last year he missed time, this year he missed time, but when he's on the field, he's a big-time player. That's an excellent job against one of the top receivers in football, Verrett. Been impressive in this first quarter. First-round pick a couple of years ago out of TCU. So another drive with the first down and kick it away for Pittsburgh. Jordan Berry sends a tumbler down. It's Jacoby Jones caught it at the 10. He said, wait a minute, Shamarco Thomas tried to catch it along with me. That's going to be a flag. That's going to be a big mistake. That'll give him 15. Pete Morelli, referee. Fair catch interference, number 29, the kicking team. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So we're going to be back in the 10 now. It's at the 25. I don't have to mention that he's from Syracuse, do I? No, please. All right, I won't. Next week, Monday Night Football. We're back on the East Coast, and we'll have the Giants and the Eagles. What a rally for the Giants against San Francisco. Entertaining fourth quarter last night. Philly got the offense rolling against the Saints. So both teams come in feeling good off of victory. We'll see Eli. We'll see DeMarco. We'll see Chip Kelly. All the Eagles. Tom Coughlin and the Giants. Philadelphia next stop. Monday Night Football. 8.15 Eastern. Countdown begins at 6 Eastern time. Conversation continuing here with not just Mike Vick, Landry Jones, and the quarterbacks. Also, the officials says Will Allen is walked to the Steeler locker room. We hear that Will Allen is out for the game. Left ankle injury, Will Allen out for the Steelers. That's a secondary that doesn't need that, John, especially when Rivers wants to spread them and throw it all over the ballpark. They have a lot of unknowns out there in their secondary. Number 41, Antoine Blake. Number 31, Ross Cockrell. Not a lot of experience in pro football in this Steeler secondary. Third drive for the Chargers as we wrap up this first quarter. Rivers will just spit it out quickly to Gordon, who is wrapped up. And Antoine Blake held on long enough for the rest of his guys to come and make the stop. Nothing game there after a quarter. Rivers to Gates. The story. 7-0 San Diego. ESPN celebrating the legacy of Monday Night Football. Every time we come here, why don't, why don't we live here? What are we missing out on? <laughs> I don't know. It's great. We're complaining because it's 90 degrees and sunny. <laughs> We're no, not complaining. <laughs> you sounded like it, Mike. No, no, no. Sometimes there are reasons. Sometimes there are excuses. That's all. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters, Jerry Austin, our Super Bowl referee up here in the booth. On the hand to Gordon. It is three yards on the run for Melvin. We have a flag down. Five penalties in the first quarter. Four on Pittsburgh. Holding. Number 79, offense, 10-yard penalty still, second down. John, we talk about Gordon going 15th overall in the 2015 draft. 
Terrific running back out of Wisconsin. Chargers moved up to get him. Those measurables, terrific. The four five speed. We saw what he did that day against Nebraska. 408 yards. Ladanian Tomlinson, Charger great, had the record for the most running yards in a game, FBS record. And Gordon broke that record and he had it for all of one week. And then Samashe Pirine of Oklahoma ran for 427 against Kansas the very next week. But still great productivity. Second in the Heisman for Marcus Mariota. Second and 21. Here he is out of the backfield. And show some of that. Still fighting for yards, John. He didn't have to do much of that at Wisconsin. Well, he can become a big part of the passing game with his running ability. He's got a chance to be an excellent pro. Just a little check down over the ball and good decisive north-south running from Gordon. This is a whole new ball game. I really don't think they have the components to feature Melvin Gordon right now. They don't have a blocking tight end. They don't have a true fullback. This time will come. Gordon out, Rivers, eight of eight thus far. Woodhead in as the back. Rivers protected. Throws it downfield, incomplete. And Dontrell Inman, the second year receiver out of Virginia, speeding and streaking across the field. Behind the play, we have some pushing and shoving. Gates was involved, but that breaks up now. Watch Rivers in the pocket. I mean, he throws the ball down the field 45 yards with people draped around his body. His pocket fundamentals are amazing. Penalties have killed San Diego in the last two possessions. Mike Mitchell, the Steelers, is so lucky. He just only gets back to the 26 on the take back. Pittsburgh has not had good field position. Cypher's helping that. 46 yards of net on that last kick. Well, we come to town on Monday night. We celebrate local football. We're going Pee Wee football. Kids from Mira Mesa, the Mira Mesa Chargers. Eight of them have been playing on this team for about five years now. Chance to see these guys start to live their dream. Little bolts on their helmets as well. And uh, they are at the game tonight, enjoying the game. And they got to play director on That's Monday Night awesome, Football. Huh? Now, look at these guys. <laughs> John Mark Stewart, our uh, MVP back in the replay area. Teaching these guys how to go back and show the highlights of your pal running there. Even punching in some graphics. What is he typing? Chargers are the best. Chargers are the best. Not bad, huh? Great experience really for them. Cool. Love young kids, and what a great experience. Monday night football to get to type in <laughs> all that stuff. Love it. Dan Loifi is the coach, the Mira Mesa Charger Pee Wee U11, under 11 team, hanging out with us here on Monday Night Football tonight. Great to have you guys with us. So many great players have come out of this San Diego area over the years from 21. Bell's got nowhere to go. The fight back to just lose two yards on that one. So it'll be second down and 12. They're going to have to throw the ball on first down to loosen up this Charger defense. San Diego came in here struggling against the run. So far, they've done a nice job crowding the line of scrimmage with Eric Weddle. Both of these safeties have been impacts around the football. Vic's going to have to throw the ball, but here they go in the Wildcat again. Anti Teo is back in the game, John. When we watched his injury via replay, didn't think we'd see him back in. As he got bent backwards. Again, in his belt. The Wildcat snapped to the 25-yard line. It'll be third and six coming up. We mentioned earlier that prior drive, the former Notre Damer, second-round pick in 2013, was injured. There he is, 50, as he was tackling D'Angelo Williams. John has had a history of ankle problems. Well, he's missed 21 games in two years. That's a huge sigh of relief getting Teo back on the field, their signal caller. That was Eric Weddle's job, and almost always in the NFL, it's a linebacker who takes the remote control radio headset play call from the sideline and delivers it. That's a pass delivered by Vince, but Marcus Wheaton can't hang on. It's incomplete, and you can see Todd Haley clenching his fist and his teeth. A little frustration, they're not tied in right now. Well, it's timing, Mike. You throw a timing route to the outside, it has to be a three-step drop, throw it off the plant, the footwork, the depth of the route, everything has to be exact, and 
the timing of this Steeler pass offense is way off. And it probably should be. Vic's only been here for seven weeks. Four possessions, four punts. This is a Jordan Berry kick and a long one. Here comes Jacoby Jones in the 19. Shamarco yeah. Thomas tries to make up for that penalty earlier with the tackle. But as you see in screen, another flag down. Seems like every special teams play we have a penalty, Mike. A lot of flags out there. They're still throwing them. 56-yard kick by Barry. We'll see where it ends up. It's tough on Antonio Brown. All the routes he's used to running, all the pre-snap communication with Ben Roethlisberger, been non-existent so far. All right, conference over. There are two fouls on the play by the receiving team. Illegal block in the back, number 41. That penalty would be declined. Personal foul, blocking while out of bounds, number 41. That penalty would be accepted. 15 yards, first down, and timeout. Pushing back inside the 20. A lot of field for Phillip Rivers. Got off to a hot start. Only missed one. Like a little music there, John? You look like a big fan of the pan flute? I like that. I like things a little harder than that, though. <laughs> a little more juice. A little rock and roll, but it is good. I like that. Is that a flute? Uh, pan flute. Zomfir was the master of the pan flute back in the day. Chargers take over inside their own 10. Here's Gordon. Hard run, couple of yards for Melvin Gordon. Robert Golden made the tackle. Golden, very little defensive snaps thus far this year. It's hard to get this running game going. They don't have a natural fullback. You're, you're going to see Gordon off to the right side right here, and there's just not much there. He's not used to running one-back runs every play. All the Wisconsin stuff, fullback leading the way, right? Rivers updates four or five guys on the field, and then flag was thrown, and Gordon went to the wrong spot. False start. Then we got Number 75 set. offense. Five-yard penalty remains, second down. Chris Harrison again is flag. Mike, it's this offensive line. Harrison's a backup. That's his second penalty of the night. We've already seen another penalty called. Three penalties on the offensive line, and it's killing them. They're putting themselves way behind in a down and distance, and you got to be perfect when you got to go 90 yards every single series. You see that stat there. DJ Fluke is 76. The right guard is the only first rounder taken in terms of offensive linemen in 29 years for the Chargers. Rivers out of his own end zone, fires in traffic. Allen was looking for the flag on Cockrell and did not get it. Cameron Haywood brought the plush pressure for the Steelers. I like Cockrell. It's going to be a hook route by Keenan Allen, the Chargers' leading receiver. Cockrell showed up and wanted Antonio Brown on the practice field every day. And he really got in good favor with Mike Tomlin and Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator, a young kid with a lot of confidence, doing some good things. Well, the contact there did not draw the flag. It's third and 13. Steelers bring four. It's a Woodhead check down. Steelers rally to the ball and stop a few yards shy. That's a good job by Bud Dupree. Started pass rushing. Right. Runs back to make the tackle. Bud Dupree, Mike, when he went to the combine and worked out, he worked himself into a first-round draft choice. Vertical leap, 40-yard dash at 275 pounds. He has prototype size. And Flag down for the block in the back as Brown takes it into Charger territory with two markers throw. Well, Jordan Todd in number 30 with an obvious block in the back. And this is ridiculous. All of the penalties on special teams. That's four already, three on Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin can't be happy. Watch Todd in number 30 the push return, Ducky right in the back. block in the back, number 30 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down, and timeout. There'll be roster changes if these penalties on special teams continue. Because that guy doesn't need much room.
Sports Classic. San Diego. You're inside Qualcomm Stadium and coverage tonight from Spider Cam is brought to you by Direct TV. Got to open it up on early downs if I'm Pittsburgh. Four drives, four punts for the Steelers. It's their best starting position of the night. Vic underneath Antonio Brown, gain of a yard. Tail, the tackle. It appears every time Pittsburgh throws, Antonio Brown is the primary target. And San Diego knows it. Another shallow cross, this time it's zone coverage. And San Diego Chargers are waiting on Antonio Brown. Nice work by Teo and Butler. John, eight first down snaps to the Steelers. That one gained two officially. They're only averaging a yard a play on first down. So they need to get a little bit going earlier in these drives. Le'Veon Bell on the run. He'll get a first down as he is tripped up by Verrett at the 34-yard line. They love to run this counter play. Start one way, come back the other, and use DeCastro pulling and Heath Miller at the point of attack and let Le'Veon Bell do the rest. He loves that counter play, and he is electrifying with the ball. He can run it, he can catch it. His production in the last eight regular season games is amazing to me. And Roosevelt Nixon in there, fullback, has only played 20 snaps of offense so far. Makes the first-year man out of Kent State. In the 34, he leads again. Bell runs off that little crease to get to the 38-yard line. And Le'Veon Bell, you mentioned Johnny, comes in a couple of years ago from Michigan State. It's his third season. Antonio Brown from an hour away from Michigan State in Central Michigan. Boy, they had a great impact. Bell, since 2014, update him now. He leads the NFL in yards last year in this total yards. Catching it and running it from scrimmage. Antonio Brown, same impact. Leading the NFL in receiving yards over the last two years. They really are the killer bees with Ben and Bell and Brown. And trying to fill in that Roethlisberger component with Vic for these couple of games. Oh, third straight carry. Three great moves on that run. And that's all Le'Veon Bell right there. First down Pittsburgh. I mean, Le'Veon Bell, this counter play, they changed the formation repeatedly and just let it come to life. Watch the hesitation right there in the hole. Mm. He bounces it to the outside. No, I'm going to cut it back. And watch the impact and the fight in Le'Veon Bell to get the first down. Not only that, Mike, you can line him up at wide receiver. He can run any route you can draw up. This is the most complete personal back in the game. Are we in your office now? You got a clicker too? Sorry about that. Man. I got a little excited. God, you got enough toys here, huh? Bell again. See that crease? Press the hole, popped it outside. Beautiful jump cut inside. Spectacular runner. Le'Veon Bell, first down Steelers. Well, we talked to Mike Tomlin last night. He says, we're going to ring the bell tonight. <laughs> and that's four straight runs. And I'd be surprised if Bell comes off the field. He never gets tired. This is his own play. They're running to their left. An offensive line coach, Mike Munchak, one of the best scheme coaches in football, is doing his part as well. You only got the sense? You know what? Enough. We tried all this stuff. Go to Bell. Yeah. Go to Bell. We're going to throw a fullback in there and just pound it. Let our best guy be at his best. Get straight carry. San Diego figured it out. Ingram. With a terrific play, Melvin Ingram, the first rounder out of South Carolina. Well, to me, Mike Vick needs to see this. Eric Weddle is almost offside. He's a safety man. Weddle's in the box. It's about as congested a look as you can get. That's where you need the quarterback to audible. But and throw the ball that? to Antonio Brown, obviously not. But yeah. you got to take advantage of looks like that. If, if Bell can command that kind of a look, you have to take advantage of it and throw it. The Charger injury. On the far side, Patrick Robinson, their nickel is shaken up. So the Chargers training staff over there to look at him. As they do that, we'll step out. 6.09 left. Steelers on the move with Bell trying to tie the game. John, we're just talking in break. Ben Roethlisberger, that may have been a different scenario on that play. Oh, would have been. Roethlisberger would have seen this loaded box, and he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage. He would have looked out to Antonio Brown 
and giving him one of those Pittsburgh Steeler hand signals that nobody sees or hears. They miss the nonverbal communication in the audible to Rocket Burger. Wildcat again. Bell got hit in the face by Williams as he was coming by. That slowed it down. And Donald Butler finished it off. So another big loss. Back-to-back -back losses on running plays. Bell's a great back, but you have to do more than just run Bell. Every time they get into this Wildcat formation, San Diego is crowding the box with as many chargers as they have. Here's Williams as he's coming by. It changes the mesh point when you elbow the guy in the face mask. Bell has lost five and four in these back-to-back -back carries, setting up third and 19. Steelers trying to stay in field goal range, which has been shaky for them. They get it to Bell one more time, and Bell takes it to the 29-yard line, and now the shaky part of the Steelers' season, which is kicking field goals. I think you know the tale, Sean Sweezum was injured in the Hall of Fame game. Garrett Hartley was injured in preseason game three. Josh Scobie missed two field goals at the end in key spots last week, so he was released. We introduce you to Chris Boswell, the fourth kicker Mike Tomlin's had, but we're not even to the middle of October. I've been through this myself, Mike. That's why we drafted Janikowski in the first round, for crying out loud. They need this to go through the uprights. First NFL field goal attempt from 47, Chris Boswell. Here's the cheers of the Steeler fans. Mike Tomlin loves that. Never thought they'd get so excited by a 47-yard field goal. Here tonight on ESPN. So Boswell's debut. It's a good field goal. Now his first chance to kick off. And we want to check the depth of the kickoffs. And that was all the way back. Jacoby Jones had his foot on the white line. He's upset at Pete Morelli. Puts a touchback. Phillip Rivers, a lot of offensive linemen. And there were some familiar names like McNeil and Dealman early on. But then once those guys started getting hurt, John, 2011, a lot of Hello My Name Is stickers were needed for Rivers. And there were guys in like a turnstile. It was like an amusement park ride. And Wiggins is in here now. Here are the numbers since 2011, 68 games. 29 different offensive linemen have started for the Chargers. That's the most of any team in the NFL going back to the start of 2011. Yeah, and they've only drafted one man in the first round in 29 years, and that's D.J. Fluker, the right guard. They have not drafted a lot of high-profile linemen either. And Chris Harrison's left tackle hurt his ankle, so Barksdale has moved from right tackle to left tackle. As that run for Gordon gains only a couple of yards so this offensive line that was intact from last week to this now has a significant change with the left tank left tackle being hurt you have to throw Barksdale over there who's been by trade a right tackle with the Rams in the last couple of years it's hard the stance is different you're blocking different people the calls are different this is hard on Barksdale and it's really hard on Phillip Rivers how would you like to drop back the pass with a bunch of men you don't know yeah, they've had to move the whole left side around Wiggins. The left guard has moved to right tackle. Chris Watt, the center to start the season, is playing left guard. This is exactly what it's been like for years for Rivers. And he's in trouble. They call it a day. He's dragged down. Jarvis Jones out of Georgia with a sack. Well, Keith Butler, the defensive coordinator, let's see what Barksdale knows about being a left tackle by bringing a blitz. They're going to see the blitz come at the top of the screen. Barksdale is late getting out there. Rivers has to step up right into the push, and that's the first sack for Jarvis Jones. Keith Butler, how would you like to succeed Dick LeBeau? Those are some huge shoes to fill, but Butler's experience really showed last night when we sat down and talked with him, Mike. He's been around here for a long time as the linebacker coach. He and LeBeau were really good friends. Now he replaces him. Third and 15, look at the push right into Rivers. He can't get his whole arm in that. It's like a punt. But it is caught by Gates. Now, it hit the ground, so it's incomplete. Gates got right to it, but could not secure the catch. But the whole reason that was a pop fly is because of the push in his face. He can't set his feet. Gates tries to come back and make a reception. Ball clearly hit the ground, I think. And then pushed back down to the ground by his chest. But watch Rivers. You have to be able to set your feet a little bit to get the ball down the field in this vertical pass offense. When your center gets planted in your lap, 
No chance. Cypher's kick is 54. Here's Brown from the 30. Jeez. Another penalty on a block. Number 88, Darius Hayward Bay is holding. I can see these penalties from the beach, Mike. I mean, it's unbelievable. Look at Hayward Bay grabs. During the return, holding number 88 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. You got a backup quarterback. He'd like some field position, but four special teams penalties is ridiculous. Got a hold of Brandon Oliver there. It's every punt. So Vic back on the field. Defense getting the job done for Mike Tomlin. Four three and outs in a row for the San Diego offense. I was on the field talking to Mike before the game, and he wanted to wish a happy birthday to his daughter, Jada, who's at home watching tonight before she went to bed at halftime. So Jada, your dad's thinking of you. Wish you a happy birthday. Mike really got used to not being in a camp, not in the OTAs, being around his daughters, being around his family, doing a lot of the dad things. But then the call came, and he was wondering why he wasn't getting the call to show up in anybody's camp and be a veteran backup. Now this opportunity, trying to save a few here to Roethlisberger's back. Play pass, checking it down to Bell. Good job in space by Manti Teo. That's great by Teo. That was one of the concerns I had for the Chargers' pass defense was their underneath coverage tackling Le'Veon Bell in one-on-one -on -one situations. But watch Teo read this check down and make a beautiful one-on-one -on -one tackle against a premier back in space. Hard to do. We were watching tape separately in our homes, and I texted you this week about Teo. And in space, a couple guys have beaten him. It was a heck of a play against as good of a back as you find in the league. He's got seven tackles, Manti, so far. We hit the two-minute warning here in San Diego. Chargers up for We've had a trade involving Michael Vick. The San Diego Chargers and Atlanta Falcons swap the number one pick of the draft. With the uh, first selection in the 2001 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Michael Vick. Yeah, I always thought this was the entire process that I was going to be a Chargers, but, you know, the trade was made. Hopefully everything will go good for them. Kind of an interesting story with Vick. You go back to 2001 after refresh your memory. Mike Riley was the coach. The late John Butler was the GM here. They dissected Vic and decided this is where we wanted to go. That was the time, John, where you went and negotiated before the team was on the clock back on Thursday, Wednesday of that week, to try to get them all signed and in the fold. And then as it was going on, they just didn't feel like the deal was going to get done. So they make the deal with Atlanta. Vic goes down there, has the success. We know about the issues with the dog fighting, the incarceration, resurfaces in Philadelphia, then with the Jets. And now here he is as a backup at 35 in Pittsburgh. But... He was almost a Charger. We mentioned that to him last night. He said, yeah, I really felt that was going to happen. Now he's back trying to beat them a decade and a half later. This is second and nine in that two-minute drill now. It's Bell. A great move. And another one. Le'Veon Bell moving downfield at midfield. And it's a Charger territory. Bumped down at the 41-yard line. Woo. This guy's unbelievable. I mean, Pittsburgh is not trying to get into an up-tempo two-minute drill. They're trying to go to the locker room by running the ball. Watch Le'Veon Bell in the one-on-one -on -one situations. Are you kidding me? How many guys can put their foot in the ground and burst across the field like Le'Veon Bell? What a beautiful job with that stiff arm on the sideline. And now Pittsburgh's in business. 29 snaps, 18 of them have involved Bell. You see he has totaled 105 yards on those 18 touches. He gets a break, D'Angelo Williams in. With 49 to go on the run, it's Williams, and he gets inside the 40 to the 38. Clock continuing to run and stop now at 143, as the Steelers will take a timeout. One to go. And after we hit the half, we send it to Chris Berman. Toyota halftime is coming up. boomer has got a lot on the plate there here. He'll take us back. His final drive, Charles Woodson had some big moments. Brady still terrific. Adam and Mort with the insider update. And there is a lot going on. Both USC, Southern California, and South Carolina head coaching news. And unfortunate news on Jamal Charles, one of our favorites, John. Uh, we saw him with a knee injury yesterday. We'll have the latest on that coming up on the Toyota halftime.
It's awful. Let's hope for the best with Jamal Charles. And Mike Vick in the two-minute drill. They have not asked him to do much. Let's see if they let him air a couple out. Bell is back in. It's the 32nd play the Steelers have run tonight. On second and seven, Vick looking for Bell, and that pass is incomplete. Bell made a great move to get open. He completely faked out Melvin Ingram, but the pass was incomplete. We'll have third down coming up. You sense the struggles that Todd Haley has calling the right play. Does Michael Vick like the play? Does he have a full understanding of the play? Does he know how to audible out of the play if he gets a bad look? It's hard business when you've had a relationship with your starting quarterback for seven weeks. Got to hurry. In time, no flag thrown. Vic cannot get out of the rush. And it's a sack by Corey Legit. And likely out of field goal range with it back at the 41 yard line. Legit's first sack. He's led the Chargers the last two seasons. He's an excellent inside pass rusher. Here they put him against Cody Wallace, a backup center. You bring a blitz to get him a one on one, and he delivers. And that's huge because it knocks Pittsburgh out of field goal range, I do believe. Yeah, back at the 41 from here, it would be 58 yards. This young kicker, very unlikely. Chris Boswell looked good on the first one. San Diego taking the timeout to preserve their opportunity. Try to get it down the field. Well, Vic and passing, it's not been a strike. Second lowest, Derek Anderson is the lowest career completion percentage for the guys who've thrown it a thousand times. Only once over the 60% threshold. That was comeback season Philly in 2010. A sack a lot. Once every 11 times he goes back to pass. That's right up there for the guys who've thrown it as often as he has. So we know he's not been about passing over the years as that punt is fair caught at the 7 by Jacoby Jones with a minute 26 left. Interesting to see what San Diego does with 126 left. Phillip Rivers thrives in the two-minute drill. He has a lot of backup linemen. Four men playing positions they weren't supposed to play when the training camp started. John, you go back to the start of this game. You had the opening drive. Five plays and 84 yards for the touchdowns. And since then, four straight three and outs. Penalties. And still the reconfigured offensive line will try to start the drive with a Woodhead run. It won't go anywhere. And the clock will continue to run with a minute 20 to go. Got to be alert for a screen pass if you're Pittsburgh. I expect San Diego to be thinking high percentage throws in this field position. Offensive coordinator Frank Reich sends the play in. It's Gates underneath. He'll be tackled to the 13-yard line by Sean Spence. Steelers sitting on their final timeout. Let's see who will take this one. Pittsburgh took it. Mike Tomlin trying to force him to punt. You have Antonio Brown. Who knows? Maybe you'll get a punt without a flag. And give yourself a chance for a play or two here before the end of the half. I think he wants to unleash his pass rush. He's got James Harrison, 37-year-old pass rusher out there against Joe Barksdale. Remember, King Dunlap is supposed to be the left tackle. He's out tonight. The backup, Chris Harrison, is hurt. So this is the third string left tackle, Joe Barksdale. Mike Tomlin. Would love to see Rivers drop back the pass and give his pass rushers a chance to create an impact play. Cameron Hayward has played so many snaps this year, really emerging as a leader of his defense in his fifth year, number 97. Walked the guard back to the quarterback, Rivers, last passing down. There he's doing it again. Rivers steps in and completes on the cross. It is Keenan Allen who's got a first down. And San Diego takes a timeout with 49 seconds to go. First time we've called the name of Keenan Allen. Allen's got a lot of passes. Had a huge 
game against Detroit in the season opener. And when Phillip Rivers gets hot, man, does he get hot. He hit 20 in a row to end the Lions' day here. But they are really struggling to pass, protect, and run the football, and penalties have hurt them. Let's see if he can drop back to pass and air one out. Very much in Rivers' effusive, bubbly personality. The task he has right now, you got to make sure everybody's on the same page. It's a lot of specific notes being delivered to guys. Make sure you're doing this. Hey, we need you here for this. From the 21, Woodhead. Got the block. Woodhead cannot get to the sideline. He's down at the 38-yard line. Sean Spence the tackle. I really like Danny Woodhead, Mike. Darren Sproles left, and this offense wasn't the same. Woodhead has given him that element out of the backfield. Game 16, 28 seconds, a timeout left. Rivers, the out is complete. Knee down, ball held on to by Floyd. And Malcolm has a first down in Steeler territory at the 48-yard line. Anticipation. He throws this ball way before Malcolm Floyd is even out of his break. That's years of practice. Beautiful thing. Another 15 yards to give Lambeau a legitimate shot. He was kicking him from mid-50s in warm-ups. The San Diego place kicker. 23 seconds left, middle of the field, still available. There's the cross. It's Allen. Keenan Allen fighting for the first down. Cockrell trying to rip the ball. He's down at the 40. And we have to use it here with 12 seconds. Yeah, you got to take that time out. It'd be hard to get it, spike it, and then be in a situation to on fourth down. I like Danny Woodhead. He is the smallest back in the league, but he plays big. And I'm sensitive about that. My son's a young running back. I love seeing these backs come in here and pick up blitzes. Watch Danny Woodhead against these inside linebacker blitzes. He comes across the formation for Lawrence Timmons. <laughs> I give the kid a lot of credit. Nobody wanted him. Undrafted, not invited to the combine. He's made a lot of plays in the passing game for New England, now San Diego, and he's a crowd favorite here. So it's second and one, the ball's at the 40. There's 14 seconds left. Out of timeouts. From here, a field goal is 58 yards. We'd like to get a little bit more. Rivers working the bunch formation to the top with Gates at the bottom. And they get a quick one to the bunch and out of bounds. It's thrown ahead to Woodhead. He made a great catch, but he lost two yards. That was red and smelled out by the veteran James Harrison. James Harrison walked out on the slot and almost dared Phillip Rivers to throw that predictable quick screen to stop the clock. And you think any of those wide receivers want to block James Harrison? I know I don't. That dog on Harrison. So you go backwards now, and a field goal attempt from here would be 60. And everything still applies with the no timeouts and needing to get out of bounds. Hey, hey. Try to work Floyd and Gates on this right side. Inman and Allen, the combo to the left. And he'll just bench it here. It's fourth down with seven seconds left. That pass rush came from Golden. They bring pressure from the secondary, John, to put the heat on. They do a great job bringing these blitzes. We talked about it in the pregame warm-up. Here's Golden filling in for Will Allen. Flying off the corner. They roll coverage to the side of the blitz. Strange blitzes, strange coverages. Credit the Steelers staff with that call. We're gonna try it. A 60-yard field goal attempt for Lambeau. Made one from 58, warming up. Cypress to hold here at the end of the half. Wide left, no good, and the Steelers are going to get a snap from midfield now with two seconds left. So with two seconds left, Pittsburgh has a one shot to the end zone. And Michael Vick has plenty of arm to get it there. We've seen some crazy things happen on this play on Monday Night Football, Mike. That would have been by three a Chargers record for longest field goals. Nate Kading hit a 57-yarder franchise record. Eric Weddle, 19 career interceptions. He knows what's coming. It's going to be the Hail Mary. 
Hard play to officiate. I used to tell our offensive players they never call pass interference on the last play of the first half. So be aggressive playing the ball. Steelers line up with two to the left, one to the right. They do not. San Diego put in a Malcolm Floyd at 6-5 to play that free bet back at the goal line to knock the ball down. Vic will step up. He'll launch it downfield. Full sprint. And it is intercepted the goal line. They went for Hayward Bay. And the pickoff comes. Easiest one Jimmy Wilson will get as we hit the half. Rivers to Gates, the only touchdown of the first half. San Diego gets the ball to start the second half. 7 3 charges as we send it to Boomer. Toyota halftime. Chris. All right, Michael, thank you. For Steeler Nation, it is life without Big Ben, Act 2. Trying to bounce back from the overtime loss to Baltimore. Mike Vick has not had many shining moments in that first half. Just 7 of 13. Le'Veon Bell, a career-high first half total of 89 rushing yards. The only score came on the Chargers' opening drive. It was the 100th in the career of Antonio Gates, the ninth player in NFL history to catch 100. And we get set for the third quarter here in San Diego. 7-3. Chargers on top, Mike Tirico, John Gruden. We will hear from Lisa Salters in a second. John, when you talk about the numbers of the first half, you see the 30 yards for the Steelers in terms of advantage, but the big numbers by your side, two of eight on third downs, six penalties for 70 yards. Chargers haven't kept it very much. Just 11 minutes and 50 seconds of time possession of the first half. So things have to change both ways in a very big second half. Yeah, San Diego had a beautiful opening drive, but since then there have been a lot of penalties, and they paid for it. Pittsburgh's just one-dimensional. They can't throw the ball. And out. our DraftKings third quarter reset shows us that, John. We'll take a look at it. Opening drive. He sees the DB coming off the slot. He pulls the ball out of Melvin Gordon's hand, chest, and he throws a quick screen to Danny Woodhead for a huge play. And it's another blitz by the Steelers. And Phillip Rivers audibles. He gets his tight end, Antonio Gates, in a one-on-one -on -one situation against Will Allen. And it's a beautiful thing. Chris Boswell's third quarter kick. Jacoby Jones will catch. Desperate to bring one out as he's returned from an ankle injury. Cuts it to the left and gets across the 20-yard line for San Diego. Well, Phillip Rivers will bring this offense back out that struggled with those three and outs. Really after the opening drive, John, could not get much done. Got down there for the 60-yard field goal attempt to end the half. High completion percentage, but what else is new for Rivers? Great quarterback. Again, penalties have been terrible. And field position for San Diego, horrific this year. They've got no return game from their special teams at all. They're just five punt yards total in return in the first four games. And they have not added to that in the first half of this one. Gordon begins the second half with a run to the right, only gains a couple of yards. And John, you talked about this earlier, hugely important game for these teams because they have undefeated teams, Denver in the west, Cincinnati in the north ahead of them. When you lose tonight, you're three back after five weeks. And all you can probably play for is a wild card. Second and seven, still the reworked offensive line to start this third quarter. There's Gates complete across the 35, and a first down to the 37. Antonio caught four balls in that first half. So many subtle things that Phillip Rivers does. He's going to look to the flat, and he moved the coverage with his eyes and got Antonio Gates wide open. Watch him look to the right. He freezes the flat defender, and Antonio Gates with the first down. Hey, make your punch. MVP. The 37, they'll get Gordon to the edge. And the tackle made by Antoine Blake coming in at the 41-yard line. Melvin Gordon, two carries here to start the third quarter. These plays are different. The ball handling is different. The depth is different. Shamarco Thomas, John, in at safety. One of the five DBs for the Steelers. As that is a pull-down tackle by Motes. Arthur Motes brings down Gordon. About a yard shot of the first down, left third down. Not often you see Melvin Gordon get back-to-back -back carries and in a hurry-up situation. Look for Gordon again. 
go right to it. Gordon to the left gets the first down. And the ball comes out. And it's Pittsburgh ball. They jump the ball quickly. Trying to catch Pittsburgh Miller on the guard. field is a fumble and down by contact. Pittsburgh's ball, first down. Yep, that ball was hit out. You can see Sarah Thomas, first female official, work regular season games in the NFL. The line judge came in, was right on that call as Jarvis Jones knocked it out. And Shamarco Thomas comes up with the recovery. So it will be Steeler ball at the 48-yard line. Not sharp, sharp in the first half, John, for Mike Vick. They get it in good field position here to start the second. No, it has been a struggle, and it all started with Melvin Ingram smashing Michael Vick early. And then Verrett up to the challenge in one-on-one -on -one against Antonio Brown. He misses a timing pattern. Timing is not good. Then he's fooled by coverage. Been a struggle. And in this first down situation, after a sudden change, I think it's a great time to take a shot. Taking over the Chargers, 48. The work Bell, who had the big first half, for it, tackle, or the flowers to tackle game. Of about three yards, here's Lisa Salters. Yeah, Mike, I was talking to Mike Tomlin about his, his team struggles in that first half, and he said the problem was we just didn't convert when we got down into that, what he called that field goal fringe area. He said we had too many what he called red zone-like punts. He said that just took points off the board for us, and, and we got to get over that hump. That's what this team needs to do in trying to bridge the gap to Roethlisberger's return. Bell carrying 15 times so far, closing in on 100 yards. He needs eight more. Able to take what could have been a negative yardage play and gain about three. Some of the four or five yard runs he makes are impressive. That time Corey Legit shot a gap, has a chance for a tackle for loss. Le'Veon Bell keeps Pittsburgh in a third and manageable situation. It's been all Antonio Brown on third down tonight. Keep an eye on Brown. Jason Verrett, number 22, has shadowed him all night. Third and four, and they go right to Bell. Chargers string it out and erase it. Corey Allegiant, the contract extension of the offseason, makes the play to force fourth down. Well, you set the edge. You can't let the ball get outside. You're going to see a deep exchange to Le'Veon Bell. It's good work at the point of attack by Reyes, number 91. And that was a strange play call on third down and five, Mike. They're showing no confidence in Mike Vick throwing the football. Chargers had a long way to run across the field there. Assistant coaches were trying to get them to come over quickly and not get caught with 12 on the field. Jordan Berry's kick will be down inside the five. Ross Ventrone got a hand on it at the four, so a nice job by the first-year kicker, Jordan Berry. It'll be 96 yards for Phillip Rivers and the Chargers offense after the good work by special teams. Mission Basilica San Diego de Alcala. It's the oldest Spanish mission in California, founded in present-day San Diego back in 1769. It's still active today. So much history around this city. Share some of that with you here. Quiet offensive game. Both teams hamstrung by personnel. Chargers start from their own four. Third drive starting inside their own ten. Rivers from the end zone. Gates right near the first down. And they'll have it. 15. Talk about pocket fundamentals. Not many quarterbacks can move in the pocket like Phillip Rivers, and it's these awkward deliveries that are impressive. Your pocket fundamentals, you're talking about two hands on the football. Two hands on the ball, moving, keeping your feet alive. No fear in the pocket. 
Hitch has caught six. He's coming down to block there as Gordon. He fumbled for the second time this year on that last drive. Is tackled by Cameron Hayward. Boy, did we enjoy talking to the late Ironhead Hayward's son last night. I love Hayward. You know, he got paid. He got a big contract. And if you're a young defensive lineman, you get paid if you have a lot of playing time. Hayward never comes off the field in any situation for this Steeler defense. He and Stephon Tewitt have seen a lot of action this season in the first four games. They're both rushing rivers. Pressure off the edge. Bud Dupree gets there. And comes up with the sack. The rookie first rounder out of Kentucky. It's tough on Philip Rivers. Wiggins has had a penalty tonight. Now he's beaten badly by the rookie out of Kentucky. Speed off the corner. Bud Dupree. Melvin Gordon needs to help. That's a rookie mistake by Gordon. He needs to know I have to chip and give my backup right tackle some help. That's why you talk about those fundamentals, the two hands on the ball there. The three chopped on the arm. You're sloppy in the pocket. That ball's out. Third and 12, Woodhead is the back. Rivers just finding space to throw. Flag down, and he just gets rid of it. The San Diego offensive line is in real trouble. Holding, number 65. Offense, penalty will be declined. Fourth down. That's Watt. He's had injuries. He's been in and out of the lineups. You see it on the left side of the screen. He's tackling Cameron Hayward. Pittsburgh should get it in good field position. Cyphers has hit some deep punts, but they have not had a great hang time. This one good hang time, not as deep. Antonio Brown catches the 47-yarder at the 41. Well covered. Thrown down aggressively by Cavell Connor. 4 7 on the hang time of that kick. Still good field position for Pittsburgh. Their own 41. Coverage tonight from Spider Can is brought to you by Direct TV. Pittsburgh has got to take advantage of this field position. Like six of their eight drives have crossed midfield. They have three points to show for it. And great field position again. Drive start from the 42. Couple of tight ends to the left. Le'Veon Bell sitting on 95 yards. Vic looking for space and he's brought down. As he tried to climb the pocket. Could not get the protection. You can see right tackle Marcus Gilbert get beat to the inside quickly. Michael Vick is beat off the spot. A Tauchu from Georgia Tech wreaking havoc in the Steeler backfield. And Matthews, the ex-Indianapolis Colt with a big sack. Yeah, Ricardo Matthews gets his fourth career sack. It's been his first four years with the Colts. Last couple here in San Diego. Colts field to this roster with GM Tom Telesco, who came from Indianapolis. Heath Miller on the tight end screen, trying to get away from Butler. And he'll get most of the sack yardage back to set up third and ten. Heath Miller pass protects a lot. And sometimes they tell Heath Miller to act like you're pass protecting and will throw you a screen. That positive play puts Pittsburgh in third down and 10. Keep an eye on number 97, a Tauchu. Hard man to block. Third down struggles. Pressure comes. Dell picks it up. Vic throws. And it's almost intercepted. Jimmy Wilson had a read on that ball. Darius Hayward Bay, the intended receiver. It's another three and out. Just too much going on on Michael Vick. Vick's plate right now. If I'm Mike Tomlin, I might think about Landry Jones. At least he's been in this program for a period of years. This ball should be intercepted again. It's the second time Michael Vick has thrown the ball right to a San Diego Charger. Wilson couldn't get it. Landry Jones is the backup. He has not appeared in an NFL regular season game. 
Jordan Berry for the seventh time tonight with a punt. This is not his best. Jacoby Jones couldn't get to it and pays for it. Then thrown down to another one at the five. 53 yards, nothing but net. 95 this time for Rivers to deal with. Both offenses, not good. Uh, with current day USC, as Steve Sarkeesian relieved of his duties as head coach of the football program as they go through their issues, go back to the days of SC's rise, and then what happened after the championships tomorrow night. Ninth possession for the Chargers. They have not started beyond their own 26. This one at their own five. No place for Gordon to go. Try to go out that back. And get tackled at the seven. Whole line is in real trouble. Phillip Rivers, no chance. Two different centers. Tackles changing positions. The center gets walked right into Phillip Rivers' lap. Right tackle, Wiggins beat by Dupree. Tough to play quarterback. Tough to be a back when you just can't block. No time to throw, no time to take advantage of Will Allen, the safety being out. Underneath throw to Green, tight end to the 15-yard line. It'll be a first down for San Diego. John is fourth-year player out of Louisiana. Lafayette did a nice job in the four-game absence of Gates. He sure did. He's an excellent receiver and a vertical threat. The man can run. And Antonio Gates jumping at the bit. Jump into the no huddle for the 16. Rivers quickly to Keenan Allen. 21 to the 22 yard line for Allen. We got off to a great start this year. 33 catches his first four. That equaled Gates. Best start in a four game stretch for the Chargers to begin a season. And you see how quickly Rivers is getting rid of the football. Out of that pistol. Allen again. He's got offensive lineman to block for him. And Keenan Allen gets it across the 40 to the 42-yard line. And it's San Diego's second first down. Gate of 20 there. Credit Joe Barksdale. Moving from right tackle to left tackle. He starts inside. He sells the cutoff block. And then he leads the screen on the edge. Beautiful thing. And Keenan Allen, you said it, Mike. A lot of production early this season. Hey, Charlie Tiger. Charlie Tiger! Rivers loves to be in complete control of that offense. A couple of words, tell everybody what to do, and he just dumps that one because he saw everybody was covered. And helps Pete Morelli by saying, I was throwing for Allen right there. Not grounded. Nice job by the Steeler defense. They know Phillip Rivers has to throw the ball quickly to help his offensive line. That time they were waiting on that quick screen. And in second and long, Screen down with Danny Woodhead in the backfield. Those Steelers crowding the middle. They bring four. It's Allen pivoting for the first down. He's down to the 43 yard line. They give him 14 on that. Chargers looking good on this drop. Yards after the catch. And Antoine Blake, number 41, has to wrap up in this one-on-one -on -one situation. And Keenan Allen continues to stay hot for this Charger offense. It's out of four and a half left in the third. Rivers thinking deep, thinking deep. It was covered. Trying to get it to Gordon, but it was incomplete as he was covered. Philip Rivers loves that route. He lights up like a Christmas tree when he even talks about it. Deep square in offensive coordinator Frank Reich will call that concept three or four times a game. And on second and ten, Steelers continue to show blitz. Frank Reich, terrific college career with Maryland, backed up Jim Kelly for so long in Buffalo. Authored some of the best comebacks in college and pro history. Gordon, beautiful play by Timmons. Read it, saw it, made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, lost of a couple. Timmons, Dupree, they run to the ball. You see Timmons, number 94, the captain of this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. He sheds a block. 
They have a lot of depth at the outside linebacker position. Harrison at the top of the screen, Dupree at the bottom. They're always fresh, and they live for third and long. That third down noise, all the Steeler fans waving terrible towels in addition to trying to get loud. Rivers, middle of the field, is intercepted. Antoine Blake. Blake's got space. Blake may go. Blake 30. One man down here for the Chargers. Cut back Blake in for the touchdown. That's that Pittsburgh Steeler zone blitz. And they rotate to the side of the blitz, and they got Phillip Rivers just like they got Joe Flacco last week. Rivers did not like the route run by his primary receiver, but the blitz is going to come at the bottom of the screen, and coverage is going to rotate to the side of the blitz. And Malcolm Floyd at the bottom of the screen ran a poor route. He's got to come across flat. If anything, lose ground, but don't gain ground out of that break. Antoine Blake redeems himself after missing a tackle. These unheralded Pittsburgh Steeler corners have been magnificent. Blake, number 41, ex-Jacksonville Jaguar, came here as a special team player. What a play. He's very less a fair with the ball there along the way, too. Gets the touchdown and to uh, add injury to the situation for San Diego. Already thin on the offensive line. Joe Barksdale was injured on the return good to see him get up barksdale started at right tackle moved to left tackle with the injury to chris hairston but the steeler defense comes up with the score and as i said before that third down john when you're at home you're expecting to have a quiet crowd to communicate in and rivers knew this coming in but so loud with the steeler fans making noise and they were up waving all their terrible towels as that play was going on and the return for the touchdown loud at our hotel these Steelers fans are unbelievable. We say they travel as well as any team in the league, but man, they love San Diego just like you do, Mike. Gas lamp district was full of black and gold last night. Chris Boswell for the extra point. These have not been routine for Pittsburgh. Sneaks that through. The Steelers take the lead on the 70-yard pick six by Antoine Blake. The stadium brings back memories, I know for you, pal. Hey, Super Bowl 37, Mark Ortega. You're one of your uh, staff members there it's with us. Yeah, that's my son, yeah. Mike, right there. <laughs> Look at you, man. You you look great there, Mike. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> hey, look, I look so miserable. I know you're going to come work with me at some point there. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this crazy guy yeah, They keep is saying cool? San Diego's going to move. I hope they stay at this stadium because this is my favorite stadium of all. Love coming back here, don't I you? I sure do. Yeah. You get the goosebumps driving in. It seems like yesterday. It really does. It was an incredible day. The big victory of the Super Bowl over the Raiders team. You had coached before that, that prior year going to Tampa Bay and getting those guys together and Mike Tomlin a part of that it's great to talk to Mike about that big part of it we generated a lot of turnovers mm -hmm. and he was a big reason why and that's a signature Mike Tomlin moment right there interception and score with the ball Chris Boswell with the kickoff and nothing for Jacoby Jones to do is touchback so not only do you have the Super Bowl but your 100th game on Monday Night Football is tonight Hey, really? Here in San Diego. Look at the things you've done. Hey, man, that was a great night. 100 games? 100 games for you. Yeah, yeah kettlebells, kettlebells you brought in. That was what nice. memories, Mike. Thanks for giving me my moment in sun. The sheriff, sheriff? Remember when you were the sheriff? I miss the Kate sheriff. Manning loved that. Still didn't undefeated. He? That's right. Blender. That's Philly. Next week, the shakes that Chip Kelly makes and yeah, our tribute Andy. to Frank that Gifford. Frank Gifford. That, that was, was a great moment. Week one. Happy Lovely 100, partner. pal. Yeah, I've had a lot Same of here, fun. Man. It's been a time of my life. Thank you. More to do. Plenty more to do, right? Speaking of more to do, the Chargers offense has to get going. Phillip Rivers was not happy with Malcolm Floyd, that route that they ran there. Felt he turned it upfield a little bit there. Conversation on the sideline and off the field. After that pick six, now playing from behind. It's green to the 28-yard line. Gates on the bench as this drive gets going. Pittsburgh Steelers famous for this zone blitz scheme. 
They ran under Dick LeBeau, Bill Cower, and Mike Tomlin has added a lot of sheets to this Steeler defense. He's more involved, and you see a lot of different kind of zone coverages and zone blitzes. And Mike Mitchell saw something from the back, and he went to tell everybody, I got a beat on this. Be ready for it. Second and two, Rivers get the first down with Gordon. Hit hard there at the 33-yard line. Oh, how about these two inside linebackers? Now you're playing zone defense. You drop a yard outside the hash mark. You key the quarterback. And if he checks that ball down, you go get the back. And that time, Lawrence Timmons arrived. J.D. Walton is in. At left guard for the Chargers, Gordon on the screen, got away from the tackle there by Timmons, gets down the field to midfield. Gain of 17, first down, Melvin Gordon, San Diego. You're seeing quick screens, different kinds of slow screens, trying to slow this pass rush down. They slip Gordon out of the backfield, good work down the field by the Charger lineman. And Keenan Allen sustains the block as well. Adversity. Every quarterback, every football team is faced with it. Do you respond or don't you respond? Going to be a throwing finish. Moving the ball well on the last drive before the interception. This is first through 10 from midfield. Rivers, middle strike. Green for 24 to the 26. Tackled by Mitchell, who's slow to get up. You got to get your hands on Green. If he gets a free release, he can turn that speed on and really be a force down the field. Both starting safeties for the Steelers banged up. Allen's out, Mitchell's hurt. If Green gets a free release, he can put a lot of pressure on your free safety with that vertical speed. And Phillip Rivers is showing he can respond. We're talking about injuries. The Chargers are down to six offensive linemen. Steeler athletic training staff taking a look at Mike Mitchell, who's uh, had a very good season, played in Oakland, played in Carolina before here. And Will Allen's already out, Mike. Mm -hmm. Their other safety. So Pittsburgh is really depleted in the middle of their defense. The Shamarco Thomas had played only four snaps of defense in the first four games, there he is, the third-year player out of Syracuse. And Robert Golden, who had played only 28 snaps of defense, has also been in at safety as well. San Diego has Tyreek Burwell, 78 in at tackle. He's their last available lineman. And Antonio Gates is in the slot. A few moving pieces in this one right now. First and ten, Chargers trying to get back on top. Gordon with the run. I like what head coach, excuse me, Mike, Mike McCoy did. Coming right back to the rookie after the fumble. Here comes DJ Fluker back in. There's more, as you said, pieces coming and going in any football game we've had this year. Gates the touchdown earlier, 100th of his career, the only San Diego points. Grimm's going to let the quarter go. It's like a golfer, he is shot. I'm pulling my glove off. Coming back to the team for the next one. 10-7 Steelers by three after three. ESPN, celebrating the legacy of Monday Night Football. Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters were set for the fourth quarter. It's a 10-7 Pittsburgh lead. You mentioned Mike Tomlin. More involved in the Steelers' defense this year. We have the Dick LeBeau coordinator change. Mike McCoy has been involved in the offense right throughout here in San Diego. He replaced Norv Turner after Norv was here for six years. He came off the success with Peyton Manning in Denver, but had been in Carolina before that. So you've got a, a bit of a hodgepodge of this offense. Some of the stuff Rivers liked, some of the concepts that McCoy has used over the years, and they found a real happy medium. It's all 
based on what Rivers likes. Right. If exactly. he don't like it, it ain't getting in the game plan and getting called, I can assure you that. His fingerprints, Phillip Rivers, are all over this offense. Steelers safety Mike Mitchell back in the game. Went out a few plays ago. The quarter begins with second and six. Rivers looking Gates way. Incomplete Robert Golden who has been in a lot for the injured Will Allen tonight. Antonio Gates been gone for four games. He's been in and out. Here comes Green back into the game. Stevie Johnson, their normal slot receiver, inactive tonight with an injury. A lot of new linemen. Third and six. They're one for nine tonight. Empty backfield. Steelers bring five. Rivers got rid of it quick. He could not connect with Inman. And it will be fourth down. C21, Robert Golden once again applying the pressure. Credit the Steeler backup safeties for what they've done tonight. Good disguise. He came clean right off the corner, forced Rivers to throw to his hot receiver, and there's nothing doing. Josh Lambeau, who beat out Nick Novak in the kicking head to head in the preseason from 40 yards out, hit the game winner last week against Cleveland after the reprieve of an offside penalty on the Browns. Knocks one through from 40, and we are even at 10, 11 seconds into the fourth. Of course, John, we mentioned a moment ago you winning the Super Bowl here in San Diego. San Diego seen Super Bowls. There's a lot of conversation about Southern California and the NFL. I think you know all about it. It's in the news a lot. Los Angeles, a couple hours north, of course, so much history. The Rams were there for so long. This franchise started there in 1960. Jack Kemp was the quarterback. Sid Luckman, the coach. Al Davis was up in L.A. for 13 years. The Raiders won a title there. And 1994, the last time we saw football, Dean Spanos is the chairman of the Chargers. His dad owned this team. The family's all a part of it. And Dean was front and center with ownership from the Raiders and the Rams as the NFL owners met in New York this past Wednesday. Essentially, here's the deal. Those three teams are struggling to get stadium deals done. At two different sites in L.A., sounds likely two teams are going to be, and as Roger Goodell phrased it, the entertainment capital of the world here coming up sooner than later. What's going on here in San Diego on the municipal end? Do they have anything together for a last-ditch effort to save the Chargers? Gets across the 20 to the 22-yard line. John, I've been coming here since doing the Holiday Bowl in the mid-'90s, and we've been talking about... Will there ever be a new stadium here? This one looks okay on the outside, but its infrastructure is really among the worst in the league. They've got to come up with a solution, and it could end up being in L.A., although the folks here in San Diego don't want to hear that. Well, as an alumni of the AFC West, I would certainly hate to see the Chargers leave. There's so much tradition. There have been so many great San Diego Chargers. I wish them the best, and Mr. Spanos, he'll figure it out. Next step will be presentation by the municipalities in question, St. Louis, Oakland, San Diego, to the ownership committee, maybe relocation votes or filing for relocation coming in late December or January to get the process going. So that's the update with that on the Chargers. Le'Veon Bell with the carry on first down for five. And Bell right at 100 yards. Closing in on it. Officially he's going to be at 99 for the second. Second and six, Vic on the boot. And Matt Spaeth could not hang on. That pass was incomplete. As John, they roll that one to the left to take advantage of the lefty Mike Vick. Well, that's what Mike Vick has been known for throughout his career. Have a strong running game and run the bootlegs, especially to his left. Spaeth should have caught that football. Critical down for this Charger defense would not be surprised if they cut loose a blitz. And Antonio Brown been awful quiet. He's normally good for five catches and a lot of yards every week. He's got two catches, and we're in the fourth quarter. Timeout taken by the Chargers. We'll step out as well. They've had one too few on the field. 
serving authentic Mexican cuisine in Old Town, we mentioned earlier. Michael Vick, no yards rushing tonight, no scrambles. Strange, over 6,000 yards rushing. If I'm San Diego, do not forget to control the pocket. Michael Vick known to take off in these third down and long situations. Teams have combined three conversions out of 20 third downs tonight. Thus all the punter. Third and six. Big firing left side. That was almost intercepted. Marcus Wheaton was the intended receiver, and Patrick Robinson injured earlier. Came back on the field and had the ball right in his hands. It's a timing hook route and the ball poorly thrown for protection, but that ball misses badly to the inside, and that's three times San Diego Chargers have failed to intercept Michael Vick. See six punts inside the 20 this week or this night by Barry. Best in the NFL this year. That was not his best at the 35. Jacoby Jones trying to pick up some blocks all the way across the field, and Roosevelt Nix, who's a fullback now, made the tackle. Played defense his four years at Kent State. Nice coverage on special teams there. Watch Cavell Connor, number 53, on special teams with this block. That's what you want to see. Legal, physical, quality special teams work by Connor tonight. And this is about the best starting field position Phillip Rivers has had all night. Antonio Gates still on the sideline. See what they can do with that best field position of the night. Inside handoff. Hanging on to Gordon and bringing him down is Arthur Motes. Flag you see on the play. Another holding call on this Charger line. Holding. Number 76 offense. 10-yard penalty remains. First down. Fluker. He's had a lot of ankle problems. This San Diego offensive line, the heaviest group in football when they're all healthy. The big reason of that is because D.J. Fluker might be the biggest offensive lineman I've ever seen. It's five, 339 is what he's listed at. <laughs> First and 20 after the flag. Rivers shot puts it out of there to Allen. Lost the football as he was fighting for extra yardage. But it goes out of bounds, so it retained possession with the Chargers. You see the difference between Rivers and Vic throwing the ball, the time spent in the same system, the anticipation at location is amazing at times Pass in San Diego. Number 31 defense. Automatic first down, ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. So the first and 20 situation gained them 11 there, but the pass interference gives them the automatic first down. I mean, you're Keenan Allen. You're working hard to get one foot of separation. And that ball is thrown in the only place you can throw it, Mike. It's a one-hand catch, too, as Cockrell is pulling Allen's arm. Seems to be some confusion about moving the chains or not. Man, they got it straight out. Just have to move them up a yard. The drive started at the 40. Automatic first down at the 41. Would head to the left, got a good block from Green, the tight end. Not as many Steeler bodies on that side, the gain of nine. See what Phillip Rivers does. He uses his snap count to survey the defense, and if he sees six, six, six Pittsburgh Steelers in the box, he audibles to these running plays, and Danny Woodhead appreciates it. He won for the first down. Woodhead working his way to the line at the 49. Let's see if he's got it. He does. First down. Got to keep an eye on these Steeler defensive tackles. Look out there. You see Hayward, 97. He is exhausted. Stephon Tuitt, 91. These are 300-pound men that do not come off the field 
It's the fourth quarter late. Do they have enough gas left to impact this game? First rushing first down for the Chargers. Hey, on to go. Blade, okay, Blade. The 49, he moves Woodhead back there to take it. And take it for five or six yards. Yet another flag is thrown in the backfield. Delivered an indication of Holding. a hole. Number 66 offense. Ten yard penalty remains first down. And J.D. Walton. Unbelievable. I think Hayward got held again. Take a look at J.D. Walton, number 66. Normally a center, pressed into service at left guard. He tackles Hayward. Hayward forces a lot of penalties with his activity inside. He's in there because Wiggins kicked out to right tackle. The right tackle, Barksdale, had to go over to the left side because of the injury earlier on to Chris Harris. Pressure coming. Rivers does have time. In the middle, it's cut by Floyd. That time, they're on the same page. Inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Well, Malcolm Floyd let Rivers down on the interception. They got together on the sideline. They said, Head M80, we're going to need you down the field. What another beautiful throw by Phillip Rivers and great pickup by this San Diego offensive line who's getting it done no matter how many injuries they have. Floyd was a question mark coming off concussion last week. Got through the protocol. Gain of 32. Woodhead to the right. Nothing there. Timmons waiting loss of a yard. Rivers, every snap in dialogue with his teammates, trying to get him in the perfect play. And Pittsburgh doing everything they can to disguise their alignments. What a chess match between Rivers and the Steeler defense as we head home in the fourth. Look at to it. Got to be exhausted. Again, it was 93 kickoff. Temperatures in the upper 70s. And it's seasonably humid here in San Diego. It's like backyard football. Country kid from Alabama just taking care of everything here. Handed off Gordon. Get of a yard. Good play by Sean Spence coming in. Spence is in because Ryan Shazier, their first-round pick of last year, is missing another game with his right shoulder injury. That's the first time I've seen San Diego in an eye formation tonight. Just not what they're known for. And on third down and long, Antonio Gates has checked back into the game. Got to avoid the sack. Must maintain field position to at least get a field goal here. for the snap he's got it over the middle gates put his shoulder down and got the first down at the 16. philip rivers has done his preparation he sees the overload blitz he changes the route he changes the protection they pick it up and he gets san diego in the perfect play and antonio gates hurts pittsburgh badly underneath is that what he's doing the second time changing the protection <laughs> yeah look at the yeah. urgency he has he knows he's running out of time i love watching him play quarterback He's a coach on the field, isn't he, Mike? Gives you everything. First and ten, San Diego. Pittsburgh brings it. Rivers end zone. Allen went up and couldn't bring in the acrobatic play with William Gay in coverage. Rivers with the blitz. Throws that ball fading away. You'd like to see him step up and try to get something on this throw. But the pocket caving in quickly nice play by William Gay great look from pylon cams those two guys get up off the ground to go after it here in the fourth tanks are emptying both ways all out blitz 
Rivers underneath with a flag down. Gates running through the tackle of Spence to the ten if it holds. Looks like an offside on Pittsburgh. What a disguise by the Steeler defense. Offside, number 48. Defense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Gates not quite ready for four quarters of action. I don't think it's fair to him to be in great football shape when you haven't been here for a month, Mike. I don't know how he does it. Happens so often players come back off suspension, couldn't be around the facility. Those four weeks, second and five after the flag. Gates lone receiver to the left. Rivers looking that way, going that way. Gates again! 101, touchdown San Diego! They're suspended for four games. You have no contact with the Chargers. You come back in your first game on Monday night football. You get your 100th touchdown, and then just for good measure, you score number 101. Again, it's all Phillip Rivers. It's a blitz by the Pittsburgh Steelers. He decoded the blitz. Credit Phillip Rivers. You talk about responding to adversity. He throws a pick six. He comes back. He decodes Pittsburgh's blitz. What a great quarterback. 205 total yards for San Diego, 10 for Pittsburgh in this half. Lambeau for the extra point, knocks it through. The Chargers retake the lead, 17-10. It wasn't simple, but it's San Diego 101. 101st touchdown for Antonio Gates. Seventeen ten. What a job Philip Rivers did on that drive, capping it off with another touchdown pass to Antonio Gates in his return. He has two tonight, and it'll be up to Pittsburgh with 8:02 to get something going. The Steeler team that has run nine plays for ten net yards, no first downs in this half, got on the board by the 70-yard interception return. Three Archer tries to give him some field position. Nix. With another good block, he's been excellent on special teams. Return to the 27-yard line. Mike McCoy told us my quarterback is special. Phil Rivers showed it on that drive and that score. Watch Phillip Rivers. You got to set the protection as a quarterback. You got to know who's blocked and you got to know who's not blocked. And Phillip Rivers did a great job knowing exactly where to go in that blitz. He set the protection. He knew he had an unblocked Pittsburgh Steeler coming off his left side. He hung right in there. He trusted his hot receiver, and he got the ball out of his hand in perfect time to an all-world tight end. 74 touchdown receptions. Antonio Gates is caught from Phillip Rivers alone. Mm -hmm. How long will this combination last? Going strong. Most quarterback tight end in history, that's 74, but we set it up at the beginning, John. Rivers against the Blitz, second best in the NFL so far. 11 of 15 tonight. Vic wants to take a shot. Downfield. Oh, he's got a man! Marcus Wheaton! Flag is down, and Wheaton's in for the touchdown. Mike, Vic says, quit criticizing me. Interested to see what this call is. Holding. Defense, number wow. 24. The penalty will be declined. Result of the play is a touchdown. Bang, bang. The Steelers respond. 72 yards. Vic to Wheaton. It's a double move. And we talked about Brown earlier, Mike. He can run any route you dream up. They move the pocket. They get Antonio Brown. Excuse me, Marcus Wheaton on a double move. That's an amazing job by Wheaton. Hasn't had a ball thrown to him all night. And Brandon Flowers got nose trouble. He bought that comeback, and he paid for it. Important extra point to tie the game. First time kicker knocks it through as Chris Boswell adds the extra point. Vic took a shot. A Tauchi was coming in. Hit him hard after the Gates-Rivers connection. 20 seconds later, it's Vic to Wheaton. Feels good for Vic. 
get the Steelers back even with San Diego. They get a touchdown pass last Thursday against Baltimore in his first start for the Steelers. But a sweet 72-yarder to Marcus Wheaton, get it even at 17 apiece halfway through the fourth. Good depth on the kicks tonight by Lambeau. And Marcus. Pittsburgh's Roswell. Beg your pardon, John. Excuse, excuse me, Mike. Marcus Wheaton runs a beautiful double move. I thought it was Antonio Brown. What a sweet stop and start takeoff by Wheaton. And he has the speed to finish it. But what I love the most, Mike, is Vic standing in there under fire. I mean, you don't take many hits like this. Michael Vick showcasing his mental toughness and physical toughness. Been a long night. Got to give him credit for hanging in there. Beautiful throw. His first 17 passes did not gain much. Not many deep shots downfield. Right back in the hands of Rivers and these two units that were gassed after a long drive. Very short rest and back out there. Harrison hit Rivers as he threw it complete for the gain of five. Hayward got him in the middle. Harrison off the edge. Cameron Hayward has caused penalties. He's hit quarterbacks. He stops the run. And I can't say enough about his stamina for a big man in this heat. I haven't seen him on the sideline tonight. Second and five, Rivers over the top toss. Gordon, great spin move. Right. Lowers the shoulder, gain of 14 in the first down. Look at how slow all these bodies are getting up off the ground. Both these two units are spent right now. Hayward can't hardly get up. And uh, the officials who are very much aware of players who might be injured or shaken up stop the game to make sure Cameron Hayward here comes off. And one of the reasons he plays so much, Mike, is they just don't have a lot of depth at that position. You see Cam Thomas, the ex-San Diego Charger, has just checked into the game, but they don't have any big people like Cam Hayward and Stephon Tuitt. Let's hope he's okay. But what a beautiful run after the catch by Gordon. Both of those players have been off the field very little tonight. The six of 60 snaps, they've been on the sideline. Good hard run again by the rookie Gordon. Get him seven. So coming happens. in, both Tuitt and Hayward had played over 80% of the snaps for Pittsburgh, and there they are tonight. And you see what happens, Mike, when they're not in the game. It's a little easier to run the football. James Harrison was waiting there along with Vince Williams to make the tackle on Gordon to set up third down. And now we'll see Gates come back in for San Diego. I think they just use Gates when they need a first down or a touchdown. Exactly right. I mean, from the first play tonight where he caught the football, he's been a factor in the passing game just as he's been for 13 years. Well, it's smart, smart use and understanding. You're not going to have a guy who can go the distance in his first week back. Empty, no backs in the game. Rivers didn't want it. Let's see. Sort of wave it off there. We have a timeout called somewhere. This was by Pittsburgh. Timeout Steelers. No backs, two tight ends, three receivers on the field. That personnel grouping caused some confusion. And maybe it gets Cam Hayward some rest where he can come back in. Next Monday night, Philadelphia. Be our destination. We'll see the Giants and the Eagles. That Eagle offense looks so much better, especially in the second half against New Orleans yesterday. They needed that for their confidence in the Giants, that big rally down the field after San Francisco scored to get the game with a beautiful touchdown pass. Eli Manning through. We'll see that next Monday night in Philadelphia. NFC East rivals at 8.15 Eastern. You see Eli Manning's stats yesterday? I mean, we couldn't do that in seven on seven, Mike. <laughs> that was hard to do against routes versus air. I think he completed almost 85% of his passes. Larry, for over 400 yards. Larry Donnell, a great catch. The end of the game. So the Giants and Eagles renew their decades-old rivalry next Monday night. Each team down to two timeouts. It's third and two. 
Steelers bring four. Rivers uses the pick play, and Green gets the first down as Keenan Allen got in the way of the defender. If you like the forward pass, you like watching San Diego play. Dummy snap count. He's going to signal down here at the bottom of the screen. Keenan Allen, little rub play. And if you have your defenders on the same level, oftentimes they get brushed off. We've seen that a couple times tonight. Great audible by Rivers. Five and a half to go. Allen, red perfectly by Cockrell. That's the same quick screen. They tried to get Barksdale out to do it again. That time Cockrell says, not today. You read the quick game. Get out of your back pedal and go make the tackle. Beautiful play by Cockrell, who's been a real pleasant surprise for these Steelers. Both of these teams played overtime games last week. In a tie game inside of five minutes in the fourth this week. Steelers back their two safeties deep. Rivers goes underneath the gates. The arch shot of the first down. It'll be third and one. These are difficult situations. They don't have a blocking tight end. They don't have a lead fullback. So they're going to use an up-tempo play. And now there's confusion on the sidelines. San Diego ran three big players out for short yardage. Rivers wanted to keep his guys out there. Keep Pittsburgh spread. And he gets the first down on the carry with Gordon. Phillips say, now keep your play over there. Keep your players on the sideline. I'm calling these shots. Rivers directing traffic. <laughs> Look at those numbers. So one-sided here offensively. The one pass from Vic. 72 yards to Marcus Wheaton. Tied us up. At the 38. Rivers through the hands of Gordon. Who got plastered by Timmons. Timmons. He plays zone coverage. And you're an inside linebacker, usually you drop a yard outside that hash mark, you key the quarterback, and when you see the quarterback check the ball down, you go make something happen. And Timmons finally got to the Pro Bowl last year, and man, did he deserve it. Great player. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up underneath Malcolm Floyd on the run. And it's Blake stopping him along with Cockrell again. Keith Butler, defensive coordinator, brings the overload blitz again. He has no fear. Keith Butler bringing a lot of perimeter zone blitzes tonight. Third and eight. This is going to be the 44th play. San Diego has run here in the second half. The Steelers have run 44 all game. They bring Woodhead back. Help save the day on the blitz. Underneath, knockdown! Rivers thought he had the crosser, but Timmons gets in the way of the 48th pass attempt by Rivers tonight. That could be a game-saving play by Timmons. I think Keenan Allen is going to run for a long ways on this crossing route. Good release by Allen. There's a chance for Allen to score. All right, big field goal attempt here. 54 yards for Josh Lambeau, rookie out of Texas A&M. He was an MLS keeper with Dallas. Came out of the soccer world. 54 for the lead. On the way. And good. What a gutty call by Mike McCoy. Rookie kicker hits a 54-yarder. Late. That's impressive. Strong stuff from the rookie. Mike McCoy, who couldn't watch the game-winning field goal that Lambeau kicked last week, and Rivers, who got him far enough down the field, sees Lambeau make it from 54. 
And a 44-yard drive with 446 taken off the clock. Mike Vick's been here seven weeks. Didn't get many reps, Mike, the first six weeks, five and a half weeks, running the service squad plays. He told us last night he's fully capable of handling the two-minute drill. He's had plenty of work at it. He's confident, if need be, to execute a two-minute drill to win the football game. How hard is that when you haven't been around for very long with these guys to run a two-minute drill? Very hard. It's very hard on the receivers because they're not used to hearing Michael Vick direct a two-minute drill and seeing his signals. It's going to be interesting to see how Todd Haley approaches this. Will the calls come from the sideline, or will they let Michael Vick take it and run with it if time is of the essence? Got plenty of time right now. Well, we had confusion there. One of the officials was trying to reset the play clock. He got out of the way before the ball was kicked by Lambeau, and it's a touchback, so Vick will get it from the 20. And Michael Vick heads to this Steeler huddle with confidence, renewed confidence after the bomb to Marcus Wheaton. If you're San Diego, you have to keep reminding yourself this man can run. Control the pocket. His scrambling in these situations is a well-known fact. Two timeouts, 2.38. Le'Veon Bell trying to get some big chunks of yardage early on through the arm tackle of Tao. Gain of seven yards. Remember, Pittsburgh has Chris Boswell, who's in his first NFL game as a kicker. Steelers are on their fourth kicker. Nine games into the pre and regular season. Now ten here tonight. And will it come down on his shoulders in his very first NFL game to send us to overtime? we got a long ways to go to get there. One's off before the two. It's Le'Veon Bell trying to bounce outside. He's got a first down. Pittsburgh will have it at the 31 on the other side of the two. Photo finish here in San Diego. He charges on top. Dick trying to drive the Steelers. Thank you. Inside the two. No challenges. Anything that needs to be looked at in replay happens from upstairs. From the 31-yard line. First down and Vic with time loading up downfield for Hayward Bay under thrown and incomplete. Try to take the shot. He got hit again. And he grimaces as he gets up. Right, Marcus Wheaton ran another sweet route. And that's what you need to see from the Charger defense. Fourth quarter pass rush. Ingram, a Tauchu. That time man Ty Teo on a delayed blitz punishes Vic. Le'Veon Bell, a great receiving back, could be the target here in an obvious passing situation. Antonio Brown goes to the top. Jason Verrett covering him. We haven't called Brown at all in this half. Vic goes the other way underneath Hayward Bay, fighting for that first half. He's a yard shy. Third and one coming up. Clock turns. We get to 100 seconds. Antonio Brown not targeted at all here in this second half. There's two receptions in the first half after not being looked at very much in the Baltimore game last week. Well, Flowers is the man they're working on. Jason Verrett has gone everywhere with mm -hmm. Antonio Brown and done an excellent job. Steelers uh, being methodical here. They're going to need to hustle soon. It's third and one. They didn't convert third and short last week. This time they do! Hayward Bay up high to the ground at the 45-yard line. Pittsburgh should take a timeout here, and they do with 1.04 to go. And they have one remaining. What a throw by Michael Vick. Running to his left. Linebackers beating down on him. He makes a beautiful throw, and Brandon Flowers is in trouble at right corner. Beaten badly on a touchdown play by Wheaton. That time Hayward Bay goes to work on Flowers. First two receptions for Hayward Bay. And now Chris Boswell's thinking they're getting close to me. Having a chance for a game-tying field goal. He made one from 47 before. 
inconsistent and certainly nervy when I was watching him on the field before the game. Understandable. First NFL game. It's on national TV. You're the fourth kicker kicking for the Steelers this year. Still have to get closer. Deep drop pick. Underneath throw. Caught by Brown. Tackled at the 40. Barrett going everywhere with him. 55. Barrett made a beautiful tackle. Wherever Antonio Brown goes, so goes Jason Barrett. Long routes down the field. Receivers coming back. It's taking a lot of time. 40 seconds remain. As Vic takes the shot towards Brown. And not even close. Uncatchable. And Barrett blanketing again. Well, there's back-to-back -back targets for Antonio Brown. And Jason Barrett, healthy again, has been up to the challenge all night. Bump and run coverage. He uses the sideline to his advantage. It's great coverage. Got to get another completion to get in field goal position. Ingram at the bottom of the screen. Been awful quiet. The former first rounder needs to get off on the rock. Third and six. Vic rolling left looking. He's finally going to run it. And Michael Vic with a big run inside the 20 to the 16 yard line. Mike Vick had not run the ball tonight. Every start in his career, he's always had a rushing attempt. Didn't have one until there. They will spike the ball with 17 seconds left as they have it at the 17-yard line. That's what he does. That's what we said at the beginning of this drive. You have to control the pocket. Mike Vick can kill you in these two-minute situations when you least expect it. He did it to me, Mike. I still have the scars to prove it. And you said it. He had not run. When was the last time you had a Mike Vick game where he had, had no rushing attempts? And we look back at his starts in his NFL career. He had never gone without one. Now the play clock's here at 10. Get the playoff in time, Vick, with a shot towards the end zone. And Hayward Bay goes up incomplete with flowers covering and 12 seconds left it's third and ten Steelers have one timeout so they've got everything in the field available to them with a chance to kill the clock now be real careful here if you're Mike Vick Mark Davis Bryant their deep threat still not with this club they've been using Hayward Bay as their down the field size receiver Got to be careful with your decision making here. You're in perfect field goal position. Heath Miller alone to the top of the screen. Final 10 seconds. Vic goes that way. Miller at the one is not in, but a flag is down with six seconds left. A flag comes down likely for that high hard hit. What an interesting position we're going to be in here with five seconds at the half yard line. The hit came from a day a die in the secondary up high. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. A hit on a defenseless player. Half the distance to the goal. First down, Pittsburgh. Got to run a quarterback sneak and take a timeout immediately. Defensive penalty, you see that high hit. Defensive penalty, so the clock stops at five. They have a choice here. Can you run a quick one to try to get the game-winning score? It's got to be something that doesn't go oh. very wide. San Diego wants to take a timeout, and they will. They lined up in the Wildcat yep. formation. You have to run this play within five seconds. I don't know if I want to run a shotgun snap at the one-inch line. You have a chance to sneak the ball with Mike Vick and take a timeout if you don't make it. That's or do you put your money where your mouth is? You have the best back in football. You have an inch to go. Looks like Ben Roethlisberger straightened everybody out. You know, in this situation with Roethlisberger, Tomlin would have supreme confidence of rolling it, throwing it, and having that second left on the clock. And he told us that's one of the reasons he was going for two early in the year. He knows that guy would make the right choices down there inside of two, one yard. But you're right, John. You've got Bell. 
as good a complete back as we have in the NFL? Do you put it in his hands to win and trust that he can get down in a timeout call in four seconds to oh. kick the game tie field goal? Keep an eye on Heath Miller on a quick bang bang play action pass. Heath Miller, number 83, at the top of the screen. Wildcat, big at the bottom of the screen. It's Bell. Bell seeking space. Bell trying to go over the top. He fights to the goal line. He's in for the touchdown at the gun. The Steelers win. Mike Tomlin rang the bell at crunch time with a Wildcat off tackle run right behind his Pro Bowl tight end, Heath Miller. And Le'Veon Bell did it all himself. This play will have to be reviewed. It's a scoring play here at the end of the game. But a stunning finish with Bell at the Wildcat. And he was running out of time. They wouldn't have gotten a timeout call. He stretches to the pile. Oh, that ball is back as his knee comes down. We're going to have to take another look at that angle again to see if he broke the plane or not. He was on the arm of the defender, so that should keep him clean. I As that it. knee comes down, watch, he's on the arm of, I believe, Butler, right? There's the plane broken in time. As his thigh comes down to the arm. The previous play. Well, the arm comes down to the thigh, I should say. Wow. They will have to line up and kick the extra point as well. And certainly a long review of this to make sure it's all correct. But the Steelers on the final play of the game look like they have scored the game-winning touchdown. All right, right back with the answer to the review. Well, there you see all the principals. Philip Rivers who led such a great drive downfield. The review is done. Here's Pete Morelli, the referee, with the answer. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Interesting that they said stands, not confirmed. That angle looked pretty clear. In any case, the terrible towels waving all over this stadium as the Steeler fans who've waited a long time to see their team play down here in Southern California are going to see them drive 80 yards in 12 plays, the final 256. Again, it's a three-point game, so they will go through the act of picking this. If it was a two-point game, you would have taken a knee because the defense can score on the conversion. A gutting loss for the Chargers, an exhilarating victory for Mike Vick and the Steelers. What a gutty call by the Steelers. I mean, there's five seconds left. You have a timeout left. The back is seven yards deep on a direct snap. This game is over if Le'Veon Bell doesn't fight for that extra inch. That ball crosses the plane, thankfully for the Steelers or they're losing this football game, they'll have no chance to kick it. And Ben Roethlisberger said, we just need Mike to guess a couple. Just guess a couple, keep it going until I'm back. Sees his team get to three and two. Mike Tomlin got his team within two games of the AFC North undefeated Bengals. Lisa Salters with the winning quarterback. Thank you, Mike. Michael, tell me what you were thinking, what was going through your mind before that ball was snapped. I mean, first off, I just want to thank God for this opportunity. Um, before the ball was snapped, you know, I just wanted to make sure that we got the got it in. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be tough. We knew it was, uh, wasn't going to be easy, but we was able to pull it out. You didn't have much success for most of the game. What changed once it got down to the fourth quarter? It, it was just tough sledding all the way through. We knew we was coming into the Lions then. It was going to be a tough, tough challenge, but, you know, it just got to hang in there sometimes. And, you know, that is, it's, not a, it's not an easy team to walk in and beat. So, you know, we knew it was going to come down to the last drive. I knew I wasn't... You know, playing is great, but, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Thank you. Congratulations, Michael. Happy birthday, Jada. <laughs> come on in here. Le come on in here, Le'Veon. I asked Michael this same question. Just tell me what, what was going through your mind right before the ball would snap. I got to get it in. You know what I mean? You did not have any time. No, I didn't. You know, and I was thinking, you know, we still had a timeout left, so I'm thinking, okay, even if I get stopped, you know, maybe run like four seconds off, get a timeout at the worst, you know, we'll kick a field goal. But, you know, I wanted to end the game right there, and I'm glad I did. Congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Mike, back to you. <laughs> I don't know if he had that extra second to call the timeout. That would have been a tight one. Cam Hayward there for the hug. And Michael Vick, that birthday wish for his daughter. That's where he was. He was home waiting for the call.
get back in the NFL. Threw a big touchdown pass. Steelers had a defensive score. And Bell at the Bell. Pittsburgh 24, San Diego 20. GMC postgame is coming up on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. But the Gruden Grinder, we will reveal it when we come back to San Diego in a minute.